So it's been over three decades since Ron Gilbert last brought us a Monkey Island game. This year, on April the 1st, he made a joke saying that he was making a new game, but then officially announced it happening for real a few days later. But today, TheVerge.com released an interview with Ron Gilbert and Dave Grossman where we learn a little bit more about how the project is coming along and some brand new screenshots. The first one is a monkey bashing a rock on, in a volcanic cave surrounded by cracks. Not really much to go on here, there's, there's monkeys in the game. He's dressed as a pirate, so the chance might be some pirates too. The lava is reminiscent of the river of lava LeChuck's ship was floating in during the cutaway scenes in Secret Monkey Island. You could speculate on what's going on here, but I'm not going to try and predict anything other than say that the artwork is clean and crisp. Every screenshot we've seen so far, including the trailer, has a purple hue to it. Even the new logo is purple and blue. Next, we have a courtroom, a new location and a new character. Aside from the fire hazard placed underneath some curtains, the room is cold and icy, as is a stare from the judge himself. His block has been banging his gavel and is cracked, possibly through overuse. The room is unwelcoming and the paintings on the wall are only further suggestions that this is not a room Guybrush will enjoy being in. Potentially a new antagonist? Again, the colour palette is very purple. Marie from Breaking Bad will love this game. Uh, one of the characters in the painting has a key on his crown, a hint at a possible puzzle perhaps. The key theme continues in the next screenshot as we see a locksmith's workshop. Lovely artwork again. This game, while not pixel art like Thimbleweed Park, is going to look just fine. There's so many keys in these screenshots, but we all know if there's a locked door in an adventure game, it's never quite that simple. We'll probably have to combine a spatula with an egg timer and a rubber chicken just to even see this room. Next we have a familiar site, Maley Island, and one of the main streets leading up to Elaine's mansion. The building in the middle is in a state of repair, but the store and the jailhouse are lit up. Crates of dead fish are in the alleyway. We saw a skeleton fish briefly in the trailer too. The building on the left is continuing the key theme and is most likely the door to the locksmith. The bu this building was there in the original game, but wasn't accessible, assuming it is now. There's some graffiti next to the store door and one next to the archway, which, which could mean something or might just show Melee is in a state of disrepair and lawlessness. Maybe that's why they need all the strong locks on their doors. Just for comparison, here is the original version of this street, and here is the remastered version. Finally, a lovely purple image of Melee Island in all its glory. The lookout post is clearly visible, as is the ship moored in the dock. So what has Ron Gilbert had to say about all this? Ron starts by explaining how he and Dave Grossman got back into making a new Monkey Island after three decades away from the series. I'm just constantly bombarded by people who want a new Monkey Island and it's definitely something I'm very interested in. But when that opportunity did arise, it was something that I was very eager to jump on and rope Dave into the big scheme. I think, at the bottom level, I think it's just the timing was right. Dave responds with... And I think we should do these things periodically. I feel like Ron and I have evolved enough that we have some new things to say about the world of Monkey Island. And the minute he called me, I was just like, ugh. Oh, this is a chance to work with Ron again and to revisit these characters. This world that I love. And to have some fun. It was not a hard sell, honestly. I was basically immediately in. I think Ron was pitching while I was saying, yes, yes, when can we start? Next, they talk about the challenge of making a new Monkey Island that caters to long-time fanatics and is also accessible to a new audience. And we wanted to build a really good, authentic Monkey Island, something that was going to really satisfy their thirst for a new one. But we were also very aware that there were probably way more people out there in the world who've never played Monkey Island, but have heard about it. We also wanted to do something that was accessible to them, so they could be eased into the world of Monkey Island and not feel like outsiders the moment they started the game. Ron talks about Thimbleweed Park and how that game may have gone too far into the former bracket and not considered newcomers to the genre. It's a challenge. The game that I did earlier, Thimbleweed Park, was more a kind of retro type game. Even with that game, we had people comment that they felt there was a lot of humour and jokes and situations that were just kind of going above their heads because they weren't entrenched in that old LucasArts point-and-click stuff. With Return to Monkey Island, I think we felt a little more free from that. Despite the history of it being a Monkey Island, it was nice to be able to explore more openly about things like the art style and things like what the interface was. I think that was probably the lesson I took away from Thimbleweed Park, alongside the stuff I mentioned earlier. It's just make sure you don't become so entrenched in the past with stuff which is really fun for a certain group of people but can leave a whole other group of people just feeling a little bit lost. So it seems that Ron and Dave will be taking an objective look at the point-and-click genre and not just implementing features for the purposes of nostalgia. But at its core, this is still a point-and-click adventure. It's not a first-person shooter, it's not a kart racing game, it's a point-and-click adventure. And so it's kind of figuring out, or really deconstructing, the point-and-click genre and going, well, what does that really mean? 
What is it that is really fun about point and click games and making sure that we really emphasise that and not necessarily just a bunch of nostalgic things? Ron also mentions that a lot of thought has gone into making the game playable with a controller, which suggests there'll be direct control of the character. He also mentions the art style being exactly what you see in the trailer and the screenshots further confirm this. He talks about coming back to the series and how that affected him personally. And revisiting the world, revisiting Monkey Island, I haven't done that in a long, long time. I remember when I first started this project, I was writing code and I first typed the words Guybrush. It sent a chill down me because I had not typed those words into code in 35 years. That was really fun just to kind of relook at the world again. Perhaps one of the most surprising revelations from the interview, which let's face it was never going to give much away, is the project's been worked on remotely, Covid having played its part there, but it must be strange after working in the same office on the last game to be suddenly communicating via Zoom. You couldn't do that on your Amiga. The big question has been whether Curse, Escape and Tales from Runcallon would remain canon. The answer is yes, although Ron said differently in his blog, but they won't be tied down by maintaining canon if it gets in the way of good storytelling. When we were first talking about the project, one of the things we realised was that we can't really build the exact game that we would have built in 1992 because we're not the same people that we were then, and the world is different, and there are several more Monkey Island titles in it. We see them, and we like them, and we didn't want to just not acknowledge them. Canon can sometimes get in the way of telling a good story. Our general philosophy was that we would adhere to an existing canon as much as we could, with sort of two caveats. One being that it's really hard to keep track of all that stuff, and some of these games don't agree with each other, so sometimes there's a paradox and you just live with it. The other is that canon can sometimes get in the way of telling a good story, and that's never a battle you want to lose. So whenever there was something that didn't quite fit, we just ignored it conveniently. There's loads more in the interview, including the size of the team, the music and working with the voice actors. If you're interested, I suggest you go and check it out. Link is in the video description.